Good morning, students. Today is Monday, August 31st, and we are going to be working in our math packets today. So um, we will be working on lesson 1.1, place value, place value and patterns. This is going to be pages 5 through 10 in the math packet that was given to you when you picked up your Chromebook. Okay, page 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are the pages we will be using today. Um, the great part about distance learning is you can pause the video. So if you need more time to write or you didn't know what I said, you can go back and you can re-watch the video as many times as you need to. Okay, so if you need to pause the video now to get the um, math pages, go ahead and do that now. You will also need your pencil. You, I would bring my notebook with me so I can work through some of the problems in, if I need to. And then also your whiteboard is going to be a great way to um, be able to, or a great thing to be able to use during um, this time with your marker. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. Again, pause it at any time. Go back as much as you need. Um, that's the great thing about the video is you can do that, okay? So we are going to start on page 5. Now, I know f me telling you you need pages 5 through 10 seems like a lot, a lot of work, okay? But I'm going to tell you we skip around a little bit. So you won't be doing every single problem on every single page, okay? And we do a lot of them together. Um, so I can teach you how to do them. And then at the end of the lesson on the practice and homework page, which is page 9 and page 10, I will show you which problems I want you to try on your own and work through, okay? So we're going to start on page number 5, place value and patterns, and we're up here at the top where it says investigate. So it says you can use base 10 blocks to understand the relationships among place value positions. Use a large cube for 1,000, so it shows right here. This large cube has 1,000 of these small cubes in it. A flat for 100. So again, this flat has 100 of these small cubes in it. A long for 10. So there's 10 of the small cubes. And a small cube to represent 1. Okay, so 1 small cube. Okay, we're going to scoot this down a little bit. We are going to be using this chart that they have here. So keep. I'm going to keep that in view so we can refer back to it. So it says, complete the comparison below to describe the relationship from one place value position to the next place value position. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at, oh, the lights have turned off. Hold on one second, guys. Sorry, the lights turn off automatically in this classroom. So we're going to be taking a look at and comparing from the large cube to the flat, the flat to the long, the long to the small, and in the opposite direction, okay? So part A here says, look at the long and compare it to the small cube. So we're looking at the long cube. We know that the long cube has 10 of these small cubes in it. And then we're going to look at the small cube, and we know that's, of course, just one, okay? So the long is 10 times as much as the small cube because there's 10 cubes in this long right here. So part A, the long is 10 times as much as the small cube. Okay, so go ahead and write that in on the line. If you need to pause and go back, go ahead and do that now. Okay, the next part says, look at the flat. Okay, so the flat here. And we're going to be comparing it to the long, so the one right next door to it. So we have a flat that is 100 cubes, and then the long we know is 10 cubes, okay? So if we take 10 and we multiply it by 10, we're going to get 100, okay? So we now know that the flat is 10 times as much as the long. It's 10 times bigger. Okay, and this last part in part A says, look at the large cube. So we've got the large cube here. We know that's a thousand cubes. That's a lot of cubes there. And we want to compare it to the flat, okay? So the flat is the one right next to it, this one, okay? 
So we've got the large cube, which is 1,000. We've got the flat, which is 100. If we take 100 and we times that by 10, we're going to get 1,000. So therefore, we know that the large cube, again, is 10 times as much as the flat. One thing I do want to remind you of while you're filling these in is please make sure you're using a pencil. Do not use a pen during math because there will be times where you might have to erase. Okay, I'm using a pencil because I might make a mistake on the paper and have to erase. Okay. Okay, we're going to look at part B down here. Again, if you need to pause, go ahead and pause and get whatever you need done. If you need to go back to understand it better, go ahead and go back. Okay, part B says look at the flat. So here we go, the flat. And we're going to compare it to the larger cube. So this time we're going in the opposite direction. So we're taking the flat and we're comparing it to the larger cube. Okay, so if we were to break that flat up into just, let's say, tiny little cubes or even just the long strips, then we would have to look at it and we would have to go, okay, how many of those flats fit inside of that large cube? So if we took a bunch of the flats and we stacked them on top of each other, how many would we have? Well, we would have 10, okay? So I'm gonna start us off with 10. We're gonna make a fraction here because that flat is one of the 10 pieces. So it's one tenth of the large cube. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Look at the long, so here's the long, and compare it to the flat. So we know that there are 10 of the flats in here. If we count these strips on this picture, there are 10 of them, okay? So there are 10 of them. We know that this is only one of the 10 pieces. So we have one tenth of the flat. One tenth. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with the small cube. So we've got the small cube here and we're gonna compare it to the long cube or to the long um, piece here, okay? So we have one piece in the small and 10 in the long. So we know that this is one out of 10 total pieces. So again, one tenth. That's the same thing as saying one out of 10, okay? Again, if you need to rewatch this, go ahead and go back and rewatch it. We are gonna move on to page six, which is just the back of this. And we're gonna skip down to the part that says, make connections. Make connections. All right, here we go. So where it says make connections, you can use your understanding of place value patterns and a place value chart to write numbers that are 10 times as much or one tenth of any given number. So just like we did on the back, we said, okay, that's one tenth or 10 times as much, okay? So um, we're gonna look at these steps down here and we're gonna look at um, filling in this chart over here. So it says, use the steps below to complete the table. Step one, write the given number in a place value chart. So they've already given us the number. We're gonna start with 10, okay? Step two, use the place value chart to write a number that is 10 times as much as the given number. So to figure out what is 10 times as much as the given number, we're literally going to multiply that by 10. So if I take 10 and multiply it by 10, I'm going to get 100, okay? That's how we go from the number to 10 times as much, okay? Now, this is the tricky part. We're gonna do one-tenth of this new number that we have. So one-tenth of 100 is only one. One-tenth of 100 is only one.
okay? The other thing you can look at, and I'm going to show you on this next example, and this, was, this is kind of a, I'm going to call it the cheater way, but it's not really the cheater way. Um, and I'm going to show you on this next example with the number 70. So to get 10 times as much for 70, we have to multiply it by 10. Well, when we take 70 and we multiply it by 10, we get 700, okay? But then we want one-tenth of 70, Okay, so we're going to look at this fraction one-tenth. I actually want you to circle that one-tenth because this is going to play a big important role in this next piece. Okay, so to figure out one-tenth of 70, we're going to look at the 10. And I'm going to say, okay, how many zeros do you see in 10? Well, there's only one zero. So I'm going to look at my 70 and I'm going to cross off one of the zeros. My answer becomes 7. I'm going to do the same thing for 9,000, okay? We're going to first figure out 10 times as much, which would be multiplying it by 10, which would give us 90,000, okay? But then I'm going to take that 1 tenth, and I'm going to look at 9,000. So 1 tenth has a 0 in the 10, it, or in the 10, there's 1 zero. I'm going to cross off one of the zeros here. My new answer is 900. That is the much easier way to do it. It's much more simple. It would have been the same for this one here. I would have crossed off that and got one, okay? Okay, we are gonna move on to page seven. Told you we were gonna skip around quite a bit, okay? Page seven. At the top, it says share and show complete the sentence. Okay, share and show, complete the sentence. Okay, and I'm going to teach you a, tr a couple tricks here, okay? So 500, number one, we're on number one here. 500 is 10 times as much as. So the first thing we're going to look at is this 10. How many zeros do you see in the number 10? Well, I only see one. So we're going to take that zero and we're going to cross off a zero in the number 500. What are we left with? 50. So our answer is 50. Okay, we're going to skip to number four really quick, and then I'll come back and take a look at number two and three with you um, and teach you a trick for two and three. Okay, so number four, 600 is 10 times as much as, okay, this is just like number one. So we look at the number 10, we say, okay, 10 has one zero in it. So we're going to take that zero and we're going to cross it off over here on the 600, and our answer becomes 60. All right, let's go back to number two. If you have to go back or pause the video, do it now so you can keep up with us, okay? If this video um, needs to be rewatched a couple times, that's totally fine, okay? You can watch it as many times as you want. Okay, let's do number three first, and then we'll go up and do number two. So, number three says 900 is one-tenth of. Okay, whenever you see one-tenth of, you have to know that your answer has to be bigger than this number here, okay? So we're gonna, I'm going to teach you a trick. One-tenth. I look at the 10. We have a zero in the 10, right? One zero. So we're going to add a zero to 900 this time. So we're going to write 900, and because of this zero here, we're going to add another one. So our answer is magically 9,000. This number here, whenever you see one-tenth of, this number here has to be bigger than this number here. We know 9,000 is bigger because I would rather have $9,000 than $900. I would rather have 9,000 puppies than 900 puppies, right? Okay, that's a good way to think of it. 
Okay, let's go back to number two really quick. Number two, and then we're going to do a couple of these, or we're going to do one of these charts, and then we're going to take a look at the, um, uh, I think it will move to the homework after this, but I'm not sure. Hold on. Okay, let's do number two real quick. So number two says 20,000 is one-tenth of blank, okay? First thing we're going to look at. We know because there's a fraction here and it's asking us one-tenth of that this number in our answer has to be bigger than 20,000. Has to be bigger than 20,000, okay? So if we have one-tenth and we look at our 10 here, it has one zero. We need to add a zero to 20,000. So let's first write 20,000 on the line. We're not going to add the, the commas or anything because we're going to add something to it. Because 10 has one zero, we're gonna, we're gonna add one zero on the end. Oh, I'm sorry, I bumped that. One zero on the end of 20,000. Now, that is our answer, but we do need to put our comma. And the way that we put our comma is we count three spots over. We go one, two, three, and we know our comma belongs there. So our answer is 200,000. Okay, we're going to move down. If you need to pause or go back, please do that, okay? We're going to look at number, well, I guess this is like 5 through 8, 9 through 12. So we're going to actually, let's work on this side. Um, we're going to look at 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we're going to complete this chart. Now this is kind of like the chart we did on the page before this, okay? So we're going to take a look at a number. They give us a number in this column. They're asking us to find what 10 times as much is and what one tenth of it is. Okay, so we have the number 500. Okay, we want 10 times as much as 500. So that's like saying 500 multiplied by 10. The other thing we can do is we can look at it and we can go, okay, we have 500. How many zeros do you see in the number 10? Well, I only see one, so I'm going to tack one on the number 500. So we've got 5,000. And we put our comma there. One, two, three spots over. That's a comma. Let's take a look at one-tenth of. Okay, this is different. Okay, one-tenth of. So we have the number 500. We look at this fraction and we go, okay, how many zeros do you see in the number 10? Well, I only see one. So I'm going to get rid of one of these zeros in the number 500. So I'm going to cross it off. My answer over here becomes 50. Okay, so 10 times as much, we're going to add zero. One tenth of, we're going to take away a zero. Okay, and I'm going to work through 10, 11, and 12 with you. So, number 10 says the number is 90. Okay, we want 10 times as much. So, we want to times this by 10. I would write that at the top there to remind you. So, we know that when we take 90 and we multiply it by 10, we get 900. Now, if we don't know that, we can go, okay, we have 90. The 10 has one zero in it. We're going to add another zero to 90, which gives us 900. The other thing we can do is we can look at it and we can go, okay, 90, I'm going to write it over here so we can see it a little better. 90 times 10. If I cover the zero on 90 and 1, or 90 and 10, I'm sorry, and I do 9 times, 10, nine times 1, which is 9, then I add these two zeros, I get 900 again. Okay. Now we're going to do one-tenth of, okay? This way, or with this one, we're going to take away a zero, okay? So we look at 90, we look at one-tenth, okay? The 10 has a zero in it, so we're going to take away a zero from 90. Well, when we do that, we're left with 9. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here. I want you to try number 11 and 12 on your own, okay? Fill in these four squares for number 11 and number 12, okay? For 6,200. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try it. Then I want you to come back and watch me do it, which I'm going to do it in just one second. 
Come back, watch me do it, see if you got the right answer, okay? So, number 11, you should have paused your video, don't be cheating here. Number 11 says 6,000 is our number. 10 times as much as. So we know we're going to take 6,000. We're going to multiply it by 10, okay? We can also look at 6,000. We can go, okay, 10 has one zero in it. So we're going to write the number 6,000 because that's what we started with. And because 10 has a zero, we're going to tack a zero on the end here. Okay, so now we are left with 60,000. If you do not know where to put your comma, bring it over one, two, three spaces, comma. I hope you got the right answer when you paused the video and did it yourself. Okay, let's look at one-tenth of. So we have 6,000. We're looking at one-tenth of, okay? So the 10 has a zero in it, right? We see one zero in the number 10. So we're going to take a zero away from this 6,000 over here. So we now have 600. I hope you got the right answer when you paused the video. Let's take a look at number 12. This one's different. 200, okay? We're looking at 200. The first thing we want is 10 times as much as, okay? 10 times as much as 200. So if we look at 200, we look at 10, we're going to tack a zero on the end of 200. So we've got 200 to begin with. We add another zero to that, and it gives us 2,000. Okay. Then we're going to look at one-tenth of. Okay, this is where we take away a zero because we're, we're looking at a piece of it. A fraction is a piece of it, okay? So we see that we have 10 here. We have one zero in 10. So we're going to take away one of the zeros on the number 200, which leaves our answer as 20. Okay? I hope you got the right answers when you paused the video and took a look at it, okay? We are going to move on to page number 9 now. Page number 9. Looks like this. Practice and homework. I'm going to tell you a little secret, okay? Miss Van Etten is a homework cater, okay? I am really, really, truly, truly a homework cater. And it's not because I don't think homework is valuable. It's not because I don't think that homework is fun or, I mean, I don't know, right? But I feel like when you're at home and you're not working on school things, that you should be able to work or, I mean, spend time with your family, you know, things like that. So, although all these things that you're learning are super important, Miss Van Etten isn't the type of teacher that's going to tell you, hey, look, you got to do all this homework. Look, you've got 30 problems, 50 problems, do it all, get it done, right? No. So, what I do as a teacher is I tell you, okay, we're on page number nine, and I'm going to tell you the problems that you need to complete, okay? Any of the problems that I circle are going to be the problems that you're going to work on for what we're going to call homework, okay? Now, homework is different for everybody. Homework might take you 10 minutes. Homework, homework might take you an hour, okay? I, that's why I don't like to assign a whole bunch of problems because I just think that it's not super fair to you, okay? So on average, every night, you'll get 8 to 10 problems, sometimes maybe 12 if it's a pretty easy thing, okay? So tonight or today, if you want, after you finish watching this video, you can finish this homework, okay? You are going to do problem number, and I want you to circle these as you go. You're going to do problem number 2, 3, I want you to do 8, 9, 10, 11, and if you need to pause it to see what you're working on, go ahead and, and do that. And then on the back, page number 10, you are going to do number 1, number 2, And let's see. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's it. That's all I want you to do. Oh, sorry. You couldn't even see that. Number one and number two on the back. Page 10. Okay, so you are working on problems on page nine. You're working on number two, number three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then on the back, number page ten, you're working on number one and number two. Okay, so that is a total of eight problems. You're working on eight problems, okay? When you finish this, please don't forget to write your name at the top of the page, okay? When you finish the problems that you're working on for practice and homework, I want you to make sure you keep all of your math stuff together in one spot because you will be turning it into me at some point, okay? So keep it all together, keep it in that folder, keep it in a safe place so siblings don't draw and color on it and rip it, okay? So keep it in a nice, safe place so that we can um, keep everybody's stuff nice and safe. If you have any questions, please make sure you reach out to me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that my tips and tricks helped you. Have a great rest of your day. Keep working hard, and we'll see you tomorrow.